1988, and I had recently gone into the private practice of law. I was 33, a bit older than most new lawyers, having gone to law school at age 27, as opposed to right out of undergraduate school. I was representing indigent clients in fairly routine cases, such as drug of possession and simple assault, slowly building my law practice. I already had standing in the community as a revolutionary activist. My goal well, now was to gain a professional reputation in the legal uh, arena. Then one day I received a consequential phone call. Sister Nikichi, this is Ahmed. Hey, Brother Frida Land, I greeted him enthusiastically with the salutation of the New African Independence Movement. Sis, you heard about the indictment? Yes, I knew what he was talking about. The US Capitol bomb building had been bombed after the US invasion of Grenada several years earlier, and suspects had just been arrested. It was all over the news, but I had no details. Law Whitehorn wants to talk to you. Who? I quiz, oblivious to the name. Laura, she's one of the defendants in the case. I really only knew the name of one of the suspects, Marilyn Buck, who had just been convicted in the daring liberation of Sister Asada Shakur from prison years earlier. Talk about a modern day underground railroad. Oh yes, Laura, I replied as if I knew exactly who she was. She wants to talk to me? Yes, she wants you to be your lawyer. She wants you to be her lawyer, he stated matter of factly. How ridiculous can you get, I thought. <laughs> A major RICO criminal conspiracy case in federal court? The proposition sounded ludicrous. No way. Didn't I recently embarrass myself at my first jury trial? And quiet as it was kept, I was trying to balance my political work with my legal career. Quite frankly, I was apprehensive about meshing these two worlds this early in my career. This was years before the internet, before Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. One could basically remain anonymous if one chose to accept a course from FBI surveillance. Despite my earlier years of black power salutes and revolutionary black activism, I was trying to keep a low profile. I was a professional now with American Express card. I was trying to enter the legal mainstream, attempting to move away or at least downplay my presence in the movement. Of course, I revealed none of this to Brother Ahmed, who I considered the epitome of the revolutionary's revolutionary. But Ahmed's call made it clear that the struggle was not going to let me go. And in my heart, I knew I was not ready to leave it either. Coming to terms with this, I realized I could not abandon the principles of righteousness I believed in and fought for for most of my life. I mean, wasn't this the reason I wanted to be a lawyer in the first place? Wasn't my dream to be a people's lawyer, a revolutionary lawyer? Wasn't it my inspiration to defend political prisoners and prisoners of war? But, but, but these are white political prisoners. A small voice inside me kept piping up. Took a deep breath. Okay, white revolutionaries. Hell, I knew nothing about white people revolutionaries. I'd heard of the John Brown Anti-Klan Committee. I heard of the May 19th organization, the Weather Underground Students for a Democratic Society, the Prairie, Fair, Prairie Fire Organizing Committee. But I had had no previous interactions or dealings with white supporters of Black liberation movement, despite the whispered associations with the struggle. I was a DC born and bred Black cultural revolutionary nationalist organizing in a Black community alongside other Black people since my high school days. Nikichi, Ahmed shouted impatiently to the phone, jolting me back to the conversation. Laura Whitehorn's a lead defendant in the case, he added quickly. She wants a conscious Black attorney. She wants a revolutionary Black attorney. She wants you. Lord have mercy, little old new lawyer me, me who after years of being on the cutting edge of revolutionary action was pathetically trying to be a good Negro and a responsible lawyer. But despite the goose pimps, the stomach gurgling and a shitload of reservations, I told Ahmed, yes, I'll talk to Laura, I said. I knew without a doubt, I had to rise to the occasion. An ancestral voice inside my head said, Nikichi, you can do this, you must do this.